Welcome to Dollars and Cents. Our podcast is designed to provide listeners with financial advice in a language you can understand. Created and hosted by Mark Friedman, President and CEO at Friedman Financial, he discusses timely topics that help individuals and families make smart financial decisions. Count on lots of energy, candid discussion, and a few laughs. And now, here's your host of Dollars and Cents, Mark Friedman of Friedman Financial. Welcome back to another edition of Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial. My name is Mark Friedman. And I'm Marion Gilman. And we're here to provide you with some financial advice in a language you can understand once again this week. Hope everybody's had a nice week. It is, we're approaching towards the end of April, about four months have gone by. Unbelievable. You know, I say that every month because it just seems to fly by, but you know what? Time flies when you're having fun, right? We are having fun, and you know what? We all talk about how quickly time has passed, but time passes just as quickly as it did last year. Certainly does. And the year before. Yep. And the decade before. I think when you're older, it seems to go fast. Why do you think that is? Um, You know, somebody told me, and maybe it was you, um, that as you, so when you're very young and you've only, you know, you've only had, let's say, you're 15 years old, you know, relatively speaking, each year is a large percentage of, you know, you now have s- one year is, is um, a very large percentage of 15 years, mm-hmm. right? But once you reach age 60, say, one year is minuscule in terms of percentage. So somebody said, you know, it seems to go a lot slower back when you were a teenager or something because you don't have that many years under your belt once you get older. It just seems to go quickly. I, don't know. I, I, just <laughs> I think that's crazy, but you know who well, knows. Well, <laughs> I, I tend to think that as you get older, um, you end up with more responsibilities. You're accountable for more things. You worry about more stuff, and your time and, and your time is just um, allocated to so many different places that time just moves along without you actually sitting back and enjoying the time that you have. Well, that's probably true. Although I think that goes in waves. I think so you're right. So you know, I think that when you're in when you're raising children and the, the children are dependent upon you, um, for those who have children, it, it becomes extremely busy during those years, particularly the teenage years with the kids. I thought that was even busier than the younger years. Um, and then once you know you become empty nesters, and someday that might happen to you, Mark. I'm not really sure. Well, yeah. You know, I had one. He's got five. So I still have There's one. There's always someone coming back exactly. home all the time. <laughs> and you still have two in college. I do. So it's a very different scenario. So you have more time commitment than I do at this point in my life. And my parents are gone, so I don't have that older generation either. So I think it sort of goes in waves. I do have a little more time to reflect now than I did yeah, when, when ten years ago, when we were younger, we were also t- always told, especially as we were getting out of college or getting out of high school, you've got all the time in the world to do the things that you want. And now we're at a point where, where did the time go? Yeah. Where did all that time go? And exactly. and so if we still have time to do what we want to do, are we doing it? And one of the things that I know we wanted to talk about today was our experiences of traveling. Absolutely, because you know everybody has different goals, and we we're actually in the business, in in a way, of helping people achieve those goals. Yeah, it's a I mean, lifestyle business. That's we, exactly We want you to it. have a better lifestyle. That's right. I mean, and, and that's, you know, here we take a very financial planning approach to what we do. And that means that anything that happens in this office, we're gearing your investments, your strategies over your, the remainder of your life towards achieving your goals, whatever those might be. And one of the things that seems to be a common thread among many people, and of course Mark and I are very partial to this, that's travel. And so we love to see people achieve their travel goals, whatever they may be. But, and it's funny, when you ask someone, you know, tell me what, what some of your goals look like when you retire. And first of all, you have to define what retirement really looks like to a lot of people, because some people say retirement means stopping doing what I'm doing now or perhaps doing a little less of what I'm doing now, or maybe doing something else that I'd look forward to doing. But it's always doing something. And in many cases yes. today, it's about doing something to help supplement my income. Right. When years ago, remember, we used to watch The Love Boat every Saturday night <laughs> in, uh, before Fantasy Island, and I forget what was just before The Love Boat. But you would watch that show, and you had retired from 
the company that you would work for for 30, 40, 50 years. They gave you a gold watch. Then you jumped on the Lido deck of the love boat and you threw the, um, the, the, the whatever it's called, the wreaths, the, uh, the lays, whatever the lays. it was, the, the, uh, all the necklaces and stuff. You and threw everybody confetti waved. And everybody. And everybody waved as you, you went by. You know something? I've been on a cruise. They didn't No do one that. has ever waved when I've done that. <laughs> but the thing is, is you went on that cruise, and then when you got home, you went home to basically die. I mean, you sat on the front porch, you knitted an afghan, you drank some lemonade, and that was it. Right. You celebrated with one trip. Well, today, retirees want to celebrate with lots of trips. And one of the things that we've learned is those that say, you know what, I know I'm 65, I know I'm 70, but I'm feeling great. I want to keep working. I want to do stuff. And that's wonderful. But when you're, when you're committed to, to continuing to work, it limits your opportunity to travel the way that you would maybe envision traveling. Correct. And yeah. we were talking earlier about a client of ours um, who went, had always wanted to go on a trip to Australia. Always wanted to go. Talked about it from the time he retired at 65. But things always came up. And he lives in the Boston area. Yeah. So, you know, it's a long distance. It, it sure is. And, and it, things get, kept on popping up, popping up, popping up. And finally, around 80 years old, he and his wife decided to go to Australia. And what was, what did he learn after yeah. coming back? So Australia was fabulous, but he said it, it was something he'd never do again. They would never do again because the jet lag was just so uh, debilitating, very, I mean, very it debilitating. Exactly. It took him so long to get over the jet lag that he couldn't see himself doing that ever again. And he's a gentleman that we see today in his 90s, still in great shape, right? Absolutely, very good shape and you know, uh, and very, very active. So both he and his wife were very active before the trip and continued to be after the trip. And they did continue to travel, they just didn't do trips like that anymore. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny when people wait longer and longer and longer to do these trips, oftentimes they wanna go to they want to go overseas, whether it's the Far East or more often than not, they usually say Italy seems to be one of those first places that everybody wants to go it's somewhere in Europe. It's because the food is so food good. Is great, right? <laughs> but it's a long trip. It's exhausting. Yeah. Travel is exhausting. It is. And you don't want to find yourself going on vacation when you're retired and spending half the time napping. I don't know if you've seen this meme, those these pictures that have some words on it that goes around. It's a picture of a retired couple on one of those gondolas. You've seen the gondolas that are in Venice yep. and you've got the guy that's rowing in the back. They're sitting in the gondola and they're both sound asleep <laughs> on each other's shoulders as he's singing and traveling through the canals of Venice. You want to be alert. You want to be around. You want to right. be doing that. So as much as we push ourselves to say, I got to keep doing, got to keep doing, got to keep doing, don't allow all that got to keep doing to restrict you from being able to do some of that travel stuff that you always imagined and always wanted to do. You know, we also have another client who was able to retire earlier and they created a bucket list of things they wanted to do. I think around age 60, they created this bucket list. And I gotta tell you, I mean, one of the best things about meeting with them is they will come in and say, you know, we did everything on our bucket list and more. And they continue to you know, do all kinds of stuff. But it's really wonderful to know that they achieved all of their goals, essentially, that they had set out to do when they first retired. So, it, or even before, I think that was actually before they retired. So it's very important to set a strategy and say, hey, you know, this is what I'd like to do um, in my remaining years, however long that might be. Yeah, and planning for vacation is exhausting. Especially planning is also exhausting, especially yes. Especially if you're the one that's doing all the planning. And that's right. why we have really talked to our clients and really encouraged our clients to leverage some of these travel services, these travel programs that put everything together for you. Is it more expensive? Absolutely. Not as much more expensive as you might think when you start to add up all the costs. Right. But they take care of everything for you. It's all laid out. And you know what? It doesn't have to be one of these travel companies where you're hopping on a bus with a whole bunch of people and traveling around with little headsets in your ear. You can go and hire some of these companies or even do some of the hiring of individual tours on your own. Yes, there are lots of good services out there. And um, you know some of the ones that Mark and I use, because we like to do a lot of the travel planning on our own, um, certain pieces of it, and then hire 
tour guides at the individual cities or places we're going to be to do tours for us yeah, there. I don't know about you, Mary. Do you enjoy traveling with large groups of people and visiting cathedrals in Europe? <laughs> so my husband, <laughs> we've been to so many cathedrals. He keeps telling me, I'm never going in another cathedral. Of course, he does, but um, because they're there. But he keeps saying, no, this is it. This is the old, that's the last cathedral. <laughs> so if you're listening to this podcast or watching us live here, what are some of the services that you use, Marion, to try to get you to do things? And right. what are some of this, some of the um, activities that you do through these travel right. services? So we, we've actually done the whole gamut of travel services. We've done cruises. We've done, you know, we've done organized um, travel companies where they take you, you know, with a group of 30. Um, we've done... I ha just hired a, tour, uh, a travel planner to do a week for us, just us, you know, my husband, my son, and you I. You just did that in Japan, right? We just did that in Japan. And so, you know, and then we've also gone on our own and looked at different travel services. And one of the ones that we really love is um, Viator, V-I-A-T-O-R.com. And Viator, you can go on that website and put in wherever you're going to be, and it comes up with a whole list of tours of specific aspects of that region. And it's fabulous. You can choose what you're interested in, and they have local guides that um, will take you around and show you different aspects of the city, whether it's the food, the, um, in, in Japan it was the geisha culture. I mean, just all kinds of the temples all kinds of interesting stuff. And I know, Mark, you've had a lot of success with another company. Yeah, we use Tours by Locals. And we've used that, too, Right, as and well, I, I believe yeah. they might even overlap. I mean, Viator yes. might even own Tours by Locals. But Tours by Locals is when you want to hire a private guide, someone that lives locally in the town, right. that the company is not saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. This local guide will build the tour for you. You say... You know, I want to visit 16 cathedrals in Rome. You can do that. Or I want to walk the footsteps that, you know, um, that Benjamin Franklin or um, Abraham yeah. Lincoln or whomever walked. One of, the, one of my favorite tours that I did was I was on a trip with Laura and my daughter Alana. We did a Mediterranean cruise. And so the boat parked in Cicta Vecchia, which is a section of Italy, about an hour and a half from Rome. But Rome, you know, isn't on the water, but we wanted to see Rome. So we went to Tours by Locals. We reached out to this company, or reached out to this person who sends a car for us, and then they drive us to downtown Rome, about an hour and a half away. We reached the top of this mount, this, this level area. There's a famous name for it. It's a big statue up there. I forget what it was called. But there's a gentleman waiting up there in a golf cart. And he greets us. His English is great. His family has a history of being tour guides in Rome. And so Laura, Alana, and I ride in a golf cart all throughout Rome. And so we're not on the highways. We're not on the major roads. We're going through the back alleys and the side streets and all that. And, and you need a golf cart to do that. Yeah. And he's introducing us to his aunt that sells gelato and his cousin that has pasta and this one who has one store and, and taking us to various locations. Sure, there's some nepotism involved, for sure. But we got the inside view of Italy. And those are the types of tours, cooking classes. I know I love yeah, to do. Yeah, um, I love the food tours. Um, not so much the cooking piece of it because I cooked for a living for a certain number of years, and it's not so much fun anymore. Once you once you do it for a living, it's not fun. Uh, but I love to eat. We, we all do, and the food is just so good. Right. And you're willing to be a bit more adventurous because yes. not only are you ordering something yes. or being presented something by your guide, the guide is explaining to you what it is. Right. I know that when I went to Hong Kong. Laura and I had gone to a Chinese restaurant, and we ordered what, what they referred to as hot and sour soup. And when I saw the things floating in the soup, <laughs> the one that looked like an eyeball, a little <laughs> fish eyeball, mm -hmm. I wondered, what, is, what are we eating here? And it was difficult to ask what some of those things were. And right. by the way, yeah, it was an eyeball. I ate it. Um, I ate it. You so know, you got to go, go, go with the culture, right? right? But, but one thing about traveling is traveling is expensive. It is. It is. And you have to plan for it. Um, and you know what? That's what we did. Yeah, you know, in terms of if, if you allocate your money, um, your resources appropriately, you can make all of this happen. It might not be a luxury experience if you're living on a tighter budget, 
it might be a luxury experience. It depends, you know, on what your goals are and how many people you're taking with you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, a family trips, these experiences can right. really be worthwhile. I mean, that's what the kids are going to remember. Right. I would bet right now if you were to ask your children or grandkids, what did they get from you for Christmas two years ago? They probably don't remember. Right. But if you took them ice skating in Rockefeller Center or took them to Disney World or even went camping up in New Hampshire, they're going to remember that experience. So some of that money that you've accumulated, that wealth that you've created, and the money that you said, well, I'll leave it to the kids at some point so that they can do something with it, wouldn't it be just incredible to be able to enjoy that and spend it with them so that they have those wonderful memories of you? And honestly, I think the kids – in many cases, prefer that. I know my son my would much would prefer, prefer uh, traveling with my husband and I than getting an inheritance. A absolutely. Yeah. That my kids would as well. Yeah. But like we said, Marion, travel is expensive. Everything seems to be expensive this year. In fact, inflation seems to be on the minds of so many people. In fact, it's one of the, the highlighted issues that's being discussed as we head into a presidential election. Absolutely, because, you know, there's a lot of talk about consumer sentiment. And there are a lot of consumers out there that think the economy is doing only fair or poor. As a matter of fact, the majority of individuals in the U.S. Um, think that the economy is not doing well. Yeah, this is a survey of um, U.S. adults, which was conducted January 16th to January 21st of 2024. It was done by the Pew Research Center. And it's interesting. They asked um, why Americans rate the economy the way they do. And they said 72% of adults rated the economy either fair or poor, while 28% of adults that they interviewed rated the economy as excellent or good. And, you know, we, w we take the position, we feel the economy is good. Um, I know I do, at least do you? Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely do. But you have to remember that the world we live in is not, and, and I don't care where you are in the country, in the world, right. the way you live your life, your lifestyle, the friends that you have, the way you spend money, use money, is far different in so many different places within our state, within our community, Absolutely. within our country, within the world. Absolutely. And though you and I, we make a decent living, the people who work here make a decent living, perhaps you who are watching make a decent living. And so you think, well, you know, I don't think the economy is doing so bad. I'm able to right. buy and do what I want to do. And right. it appears that unemployment is super low. Yet that's 28% of the population. And I you can look at that, by the way, Democrat or Republican. Doesn't it's a matter. It doesn't matter. This is an apolitical issue. Yet 72% of adults say things are really bad, poor or fair. But the number one thing that they blame the economy on is what? Inflation. So inflation is the, the primary concern. Inflation or cost of living, which are the, essentially the same thing, um, because the cost of living has gone up due to high inflation. So we have had high, well, we had even higher inflation a couple of years ago. We hit 9%, which was extraordinary. We hadn't seen those kind of numbers for years. I mean, I think the 10 years before that, we had essentially 0% inflation or 1% inflation. So we were in a very, very low inflationary environment. And now inflation has moderated significantly. We are down to about 3% inflation. However, we saw a lot of price increases over the past three years for a variety of factors, not always inflation. I mean, there was the bird flu that you know affected the price of eggs. So there were some- Mad cow disease. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there were some extenuating circumstances, but that's what people are looking at, um, people who aren't quite as comfortable with their income stream. And so they look at it and say, oh, my God, all my food costs have gone up. You know, so everything's gone up. It's much more expensive to live, and I'm struggling to pay these costs. Yeah, you know, years ago, you used to hear the expression, I'm on a fixed income. Do you- we don't ever hear that from our clients, and that's frankly because our clients have a multitude of income sources. Right. It, but I think we forget, or we don't forget, but I think a lot of people forget that 50% of retired individuals live off Social Security, and that's, that's it. it. 
fifty percent. And and another group live off of just a pension and maybe social security. Right. And that's it. They don't have savings. They don't have required minimum distributions. They don't have annuities. They don't have interest and dividends to pull from investment accounts. They don't it have emergency fixed, funds. Right. They yeah. have a fixed check and they yeah. gotta live on that. And that's a fixed income. Right. For and sure. when cost of goods go up, when eggs go up, when gasoline goes up, when the cost of meat and produce goes up, that hits them in the pocket. Right. For those of us that have the flexibility of multitudes of sources of income, Correct. we have far more flexibility with that. And I don't know what the numbers are, but if, you know, if, if according to this Pew Research, 28% of adults say the economy is good and 72% of adults say it's bad, I wonder what, seven, what percentage of those people are either on a fixed income or are not. Right. And I'm gonna guess, and it's just my guess here, that those that are concerned about high inflation, the high cost of living, the lack of good paying jobs, are people that may be finding themselves either currently living on a fixed income or expecting to live on a fixed income. Right, and you know, that's very scary uh, once you get older as well, because that, I mean, that's the other thing. There are really, I mean, it, it's much more difficult to get hired when you're older and also to get a good paying job when you're older. You might be able to get a job that is more service oriented that doesn't pay a lot of money. Um, but you know, it's much more difficult to get a good paying job. At that so point. just to kind of recap from today, number one thing we talked about, travel. We encourage you to get out there, travel, see the world, spend some money, see the world, or just see this country. Not many people yeah. even get out to see the country. You know, it's eye opening to see different parts of this country even or anywhere else. It, it people is. live very differently in different parts of the country and in different countries. And you'll gain a tremendous appreciation for what this country has Absolutely. to offer and how diverse our population is here. Absolutely. The other thing, recognize that inflation has been high. We don't expect it to go significantly higher. In fact, we expect it to modulate. Hopefully, we'd like to see it back down to two, two and a half percent. Right. Um, right I don't now think we're, we're going back to one percent no, anytime soon. But, you know, cost of goods will go up moderately, Right. if anything. But make sure that you're managing your spending lifestyle appropriately to meet the expenses that sit in front of you. Because more than anything else, we can complain about the government, we can complain about inflation, complain about it, unemployment, all that kind of thing. Depending upon your situation, you have control of how you spend your money. Absolutely, so you have to control what you can control. You can't control stock market returns. You can control your spend. Absolutely. Can't control what's out of your control. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Gonna do it. That's going to do it for us this week. If you'd like to receive our free weekly newsletter or even get this podcast or see the history of podcasts available on Spotify, Apple Music, any of the streaming platforms, go to our website, FriedmanFinancial.com. That's Friedman. Two E's and a D. Financial.com. Go to the bottom of any page if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter. Put in your name there and an email address. You'll get it every Friday, free, in your inbox, every Friday at 1030. That's going to do it for us this week. Have a wonderful week. We'll be back again next week with more dollars and cents and financial advice in a language you can understand. Have Take a great care. Bye-bye. During today's Dollars and Cents episode with Friedman Financial, your hosts may have discussed specific financial planning and investment ideas that are for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations. Please remember that investing involves risk and may include loss of principal. Although the money market fund seeks to preserve the value of your investment at $1 per share, it is possible to lose money by investing in the fund. Always consult a certified financial planner professional qualified attorney or tax advisor prior to investing to determine what is appropriate for you. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA SIPC.